Thank you very much uh, for inviting us, and I'm delighted to be here today with Annie, uh, my little girl. Uh, so, uh, to share our experiences of, of her hemangioma with you. Uh, so, we're a month now, almost to the day, since Annie underwent uh, an operation here in London to remove the large uh, hemangioma uh, that had grown since birth uh, on the right side of her forehead there. Um, it was big, as you can see. It was a bright red, shiny, uh, golf ball-sized tumour um, that had um, started to uh, invite some unwelcome attention uh, from in, in public. Uh, I'm a doctor. I, I knew this was. I knew what this was. I knew that it was uh, benign. That it would probably continue to grow till she was about 18 months. Get considerably bigger than this, uh, and that it would slowly but surely involute uh, and and hopefully be, be considerably smaller by the age of 10. Um, I also know that given that the size that it had reached in this picture, it was never going to completely involute. In fact, it was, there was always going to be some marking on the right-hand side of her forehead. Uh, and so essentially she will be marked or scarred, if you like. Um, so I knew that we had three basic options ahead of us. We had a medical option, which involved giving a, a drug uh, regularly for many months or years that helped shrink the tumour. Uh, there was do nothing and allow this thing to grow and continue to grow uh, for many more months and then send her into childhood with this thing on her forehead. Or there was surgery to remove the tumour. Now, the medical option uh, we decided from the outset was not a runner. We were not happy to give uh, that particular drug to Annie, uh, uh, so we, would, we didn't consider that. Uh, it was between, really, it, was, it came down to to operate or not to operate. And given that this is one of the most common childhood tumours uh, that we see, I was expecting to find, uh, with my research, a, a wealth of, of data, of clinical data, with which I would inform my decision. Uh, and I was amazed to find, really, that there was nothing. I was expecting to learn of the, uh, the short-term and, and long-term clinical outcomes of surgery. I wanted to know how the size and type of the hemangioma would influence uh, the surgery that would be uh, required. Uh, on the other hand, I was interested to know if there was any literature at all on the psychosocial effects of uh, growing up with a tumour as large as this and bigger on your face. Um, and so I was left with this very difficult decision. My husband and I were left with this di difficult decision um, as to... <laughs> no, sweetheart. Uh, as to... Uh, we, we had no data to, to inform us. We had nothing to guide us uh, but for a sort of hunch and a gut feeling. And so I worried. I, I occupied myself with worry. Uh, I worried uh, about surgery. Uh, I think, as you can see, really, the, the, the bleeding risk uh, of this as operation is undeniable. Um, on the other hand, I worried about uh, letting this thing grow, uh, going into childhood with this. Uh, I couldn't imagine myself letting go of her little hand uh, at the school gates on her first day at nursery school, um, off to face uh, the, the cruel comments and, and, and gazes. Uh, that we'd got to know, uh, and still brings tears to my eyes now. Uh, and so, uh, how did I got to? So really, we, we, we didn't know what to do. As time went on, our anxiety grew, and so did the tumour. And in fact, it was Annie who made our mind up for us. And at, so at eight months old, she changed. Her personality completely changed. And she went from an overtly happy, bonny, smiley, laughy little baby, she was a delight, uh, to a sad quiet baby. She stopped smiling. She didn't smile anymore. And we noticed that at seven months, uh, people had stopped smiling at her. And so they would gather at the foot of her buggy. Uh, they would stare stony face down at her. Uh, and we would notice, and it broke our hearts, she would be smiling back at them with a broad grin, looking from face to face uh, for someone to return her smile, uh, to reciprocate. And there was nothing coming. There was no, there was no reciprocal smile. And uh, so she put up with this for about a month. And the problem is people weren't looking at her face. They were looking at the tumour. It was the first thing and the last thing people saw. So she went uh, for a month smiling and, uh, and trying to be happy. And no one smiled back. And then quite suddenly she stopped smiling. She literally disengaged socially. And so we were witnessing our, our eight-month-old daughter becoming socially withdrawn. And that was it for us, really. We decided uh, that if it was having this effect at nine months, uh, you know, what would the effect be? Uh, of these experiences at three years, at six years, uh, what would a whole childhood of these experiences uh, create um, for her? What, what, what would that uh, mean? What scars would that leave her um, for, for adulthood? Uh, 
So it, we made our mind up. We went to see Prof Hutchison in London. Uh, we decided really we wanted surgery. We had a, a, a frank and realistic discussion with him about surgery. We, within two weeks, we'd had the operation. She's transformed. We have our, our happy, bonny little Annie back. Um, she's, uh, she's a delight again. Within two weeks, she was back to her old self. She's got a little scar. Given where, uh, how big that tumour was, I don't know if you can see, but the scar's ever so high up and, and transverse. I don't know how you did it, Prof Hutchison, but you're a genius. Um, and, and, and so my wish, my hope, uh, is that in future, parents uh, facing these decisions with children with tumours like Annie had are not uh, faced with uh, this information vacuum that we found ourselves in, uh, but they can base their decision on the back of, of good quality clinical data born out of uh, quality clinical research um, that uh, this organisation will hopefully be uh, organize, arranging. And, uh, and thank you very much. Hi, uh, thank you for having me here. It's my little terror. It's <laughs> very quiet sitting at the front. Um, many of you may have read the newsletter where I have actually touched on Jaya's story slightly. Um, what I haven't said in is the, the six months of trauma we did have trying to find someone who was willing to operate or treat her. Um, I did actually see five medical, um, five doctors, um, paediatricians, a surgeon, who all said to me they're not willing to treat it, they're not willing to operate on her. Um, they didn't have facilities for such a young child, which was fine, but trying to find someone who did was traumatic. I was actually lucky enough to come across a colleague who also, Professor, actually operated on their child. So a bit of word of mouth there. I was, I was very lucky to come across that. And within a few short months, Professor Hutchison did actually operate on her. Although we were uncertain about is this going to come back, what is going to happen to her, there's possibilities of her bleeding to death. It's all something a parent had to overcome. And we did, we, it was traumatic for the family, but the family come together to treat her. And she, although she's, she's gone through this and it was a difficult time for all of us, she's come away with it with a small, well, fairly large scar on her face, but Professor Hutchinson's done it in such a way that you can't visualise it, you can't see it, it's, it's off-centred. He's done such a fantastic job. And she is, she's so much confident now. This wasn't her last year. She would be... She wouldn't want to talk to anyone. She wouldn't go to anyone. She was with my mother-in-law or myself. She didn't want to socialise with people. She was terrified. We had children looking at her saying, oh, you've got a lump on your face. Oh, what's that lump? We've had adults double take at her. We didn't want to take her out because she would see that too and she would feel incriminated by it almost. So it was an extremely difficult task for us to overcome. But we've made the right decision and I think more people need to know about what saving faces can do for people and if it is just one person that makes a difference Ian made that difference onto our lives we should be doing the same and they, we should be promoting the knowledge not just for here for doctors all over the UK and worldwide because that's something that they don't have Jay is extremely lucky that Ian's come into our life and he has actually operated on her. And as you can see, she's active, she's very sociable, she's quiet occasionally, but <laughs> she's an extremely happy child. And he has changed her life, extremely changed her life. And all we can say is we thank you, Ian, for everything that you've done for us, for Jaya and for the family. And we have to continue to support this and get the word across to everyone. Thank you.